Okay, so today I want to talk to you about an Amiga, maybe emulator hardware, which you might never heard of. It's called Armiga and you can't buy it anymore. I guess it was like a Kickstarter thing. And as I said, you can't buy it anymore. First, I'm gonna demonstrate you what it does. Later, I'm actually show you around and I'm going to open it. But that's how it uh, looked like. So um, I'm pretty sure that's a 3D print. You see it has a power in, has an HDMI out and two USB ports here. And then it has an Ethernet, Ethernet port here. So that's um, basically the Armiga and it's powered by USB. And now I'm gonna show you what it actually does. So I'm gonna zoom into my screen. So right now, let's just, uh, uh, we have a game loaded here. Let's just get out of that menu and first go to what's called power options. So the first thing you can do, you can switch to the A1200 which would give you then AGA or AGA support, however you want to pronounce that. So now we are in the Amiga 1200 mode and we are going back just real quick. And so that's the first mistake. So now it's um, actually trying to get into the Amiga ROM, which I have not uploaded right now. So let's just go back to the main menu and then let's just go back to power options and just switch to the A500. And now what you could see, we could actually first go into settings. So uh, we can change the graphics, then we can change the aspect ratio, gamepad control, keyboard controls, which is kind of interesting. So you have all these keyboard controls fast load IP address and I guess that's the latest software version. It's really hard to find any info for the Armiga on the web. If I find info, I'll put it actually in the description below the video. Let's just go um, browse USB uh, SD card. So I've forgotten to mention it has an SD card slot and there is an SD card in the device right now. But you can also, as you see, just load a game from USB, of course. And just to demonstrate it, let's just try a game. So you see it's all a lot of these ADF files. And let's just try one out. I have no clue what that is, it's Spanish. Let's just try this one. Now you see you have some options, disk swap. So that would be if you have a game which comes on more than one disk, you would have to go in here, do a disk swap. We don't have to do that. So we just go into launch game. I guess here, what we are seeing here, that's actually the tracks on the diskette the disk drive. I'm pretty sure that's what it's doing. And now we are going into loading and yeah. So sorry, I do not have a capture device here. So, so the first thing we want to do, we want to hit sorry, go back there. F12, when you hit F12, so you see it has like a virtual joystick there. And now with a virtual joystick, let's just start a game. And the left control button actually on the keyboard works as the fire button. And now you see we are loading the game. And again, you see kind of how it's loading here. And I guess that's simulating the tracks on the disc. And it takes a while loading. As I said, um, 
this device is no longer available, but now you see we we run an Amiga game. And just the keyboard actually adds as joystick in my case now, which honestly is a little bit hard to play. And I guess maybe we could fire. We cannot, so we are, but we can jump on the guy's head. We see some knights here and I'm done. Uh, we can go back by pushing F11. So you see, you could also have a virtual mouse. It would be displayed here then. And you could also have a virtual keyboard. And now it's showing the Amiga 1200 keyboard, but that doesn't really matter. And then you could also have a virtual gamepad. It's not displayed here for whatever reason. And let's go back to the main menu. So that's basically um, what it does. And as I said, uh, with power options, you could switch between the uh, Amiga 1200 and the Amiga 500. So which gives you both of the generations. Okay, so now I'll show you around. So that's where you have the power in. You have one of these magic buttons. You have um, an HDMI out. Here would be where you have your SD card, two USB ports, network, uh, power supply, second one, and another button. You see it reads Armiga prototype, blah, blah, blah. And then let me just cover that a little bit. Um, it's officially licensed by Amiga Forever, and it comes with dual uh, Kickstart 1.3 and 3.1. I just covered the license key here. And now let's crack that thing open. Alrighty, now we crack that thing open. So you see it's kind of a 3D print. And then we have actually the PCB board in there. And it comes with a chip, which is called a dual core A20. Whatever that is, I guess it's ARM based, pretty sure. Then we have something called here SATA 5 volts. So um, apparently here you see that you could actually attach a SATA HD uh, hard disk on that. I didn't actually know that. I'm not going to try it. Then you see we have the SD card slot here. Then that one would be, I guess, another power supply. And you see the board is from two, you see the board is from 2015. And there is really not much to it, except um, that one button here, which we have, and then another button down here. I'm not sure if we can get the board out of there, we can. So that would be the, backside of it and you see here we have like two connectors actually it appears to me as if that would be a standard board which somebody just reprogrammed for for that and yeah I don't know there's not really much to say so you might figure it out for yourself and I wonder what these connectors are but definitely you could connect something here as well. And maybe the whole software of it is actually on this board or on the SD card. And that's basically the Armiga, a Amiga emulator, which you might have never heard of. It just snaps into place like so. And then I've never opened it before, but it's kind of interesting to know that you could actually connect a um, SATA drive as well. So there you have it, the Armiga, the Amiga emulator you've never heard of before. I'm gonna make a follow-up video once I 
either find a uh, manual for it or when I figured out how I can boot back into the Android version of it or the Android part of this thingy and then I maybe even try to uh, hook it up to to the web and then we maybe can even update the Android but that's it for now thanks for watching